go back to business. Hello and welcome to the fifth and final video of the making of the grappling gun. Now in this video I'm just going to basically finish it all up and then we should be good to go. Now you probably don't notice but this intro should be sounding a lot nicer than previous videos and that's because I've just recently made some sound absorbing panels for my workshop. So just as a point of comparison, this is what everything sounds like before I've mounted the acoustic panels. And this is what it sounds like after I've mounted the acoustic panels. Now for the project, the first thing I want to do is just work on organizing some of the wires, maybe making a little adapter for the power cables. So these are the batteries I'm going to use. They're 3S lithium polymer batteries, where 3S means that each one has three cells in series, giving each one about 11 volts and altogether I'll get 45-ish, which is what I'm after. Now, to keep them compact, I'm actually going to use this cool thing called Dual Lock, which is a bit like a rigid version of Velcro, and I actually learned about that from the Hacksmith, and I can just use that to keep them more compact. And then, to have all the batteries go in series, without a rat's nest of wires, I've made this little adapter here, which is like a 3D printed plate with all these XT60 connectors just bolted through, and then all soldered together on the back with a single 45 volt plug out. And they just plug into that, like so. And there we go, that's my battery system all finished up. Now, because I want the grappling gun to be fully self-contained, I've just got to make a little spot on there that I can actually mount these two and keep them all neat. So I've just gone and added a shield to the whole right hand side of the grappling gun and that'll be really useful for mounting things like batteries to and they'll be protected from the motor which is an outrunner so the whole outside of the motor is actually spinning around and that'll just mean that they're safe from that. There is one slight change I'm just going to have to make and that's just to add a little support here to prevent this from coming any closer because as it stands if something were to hit it it would probably end up coming into contact with the motor. And there we go. Shield and brace are fully installed. Right. As a little trick, I think I'm going to try and keep the charging plugs like that, just so they don't take up quite as much space. Dual lock everything. Hey, that's great. Oh, for sure I'm going to do that with all of them. That's, that's still pretty big. I mean, it looks cool, if nothing else. Next, I'm gonna work on the signal wires. So I've actually been having quite a few issues with these signal wires. Basically, the motor is throwing off so much electromagnetic energy that the wires just act as antennas and pick all that up as noise. And sometimes it's so bad that the motor just spins out of control. So I figured I'd solve that problem by adding shielding. And I've got four wires that need shielding and it just so happens that a USB cable is essentially four shielded wires. So I thought, why are they there if not to be used? And uh, this guy is probably due a career change anyway. Once I'd cut the wire to the exact lengths I wanted, it was time to add the connectors. This is done by crimping each terminal onto its respective wire and then locking each of the terminals into the connector housing. It's a really effective way of making reliable, compact and removable connections. So now I've got my beautiful clean custom cables and previously the plan was to route them to an Arduino which I would mount here. Uh, but the problem with that is that if I want any other circuitry, like for instance a battery level indicator, then that has to be on a separate board and then wired into the Arduino. And that kind of gets messy pretty quickly. So, I've got a better solution in mind. This is a design for a custom printed circuit board. This is the best way to make compact and self-contained circuits and it allows me to add whatever I want all onto the one board. Here I've got a bunch of low profile headers, a voltage divider, a voltage regulator and a bunch of indicator LEDs. 
However, when you add a microcontroller to a PCB, it's a totally different ballgame. You can't just use Arduino code anymore. This STM32 uses what's called ARM architecture, which is basically the same kind of thing they use in phones. This microcontroller is cheaper, more compact, faster, and more precise than an Arduino, but it comes at a cost. The downside is that the Arduino code for this project looks like this, while the STM32 code looks like this. So it's a lot more complicated to develop for, and you have to think very carefully about how to actually get the code onto the chip, since you can't just program it over USB the way you can for an Arduino. So I've put in an order for my PCB to be manufactured overseas, and now it's just a matter of waiting for it to arrive. Prezi opening. All right, so my custom PCB has arrived. Just gonna take a quick look. Oh, it comes with a cat. There you go. That'll be good for the grappling gun for sure. Ho oh, ho ho. Oh, that is pretty cool. This is five of them, because that's the minimum order quantity. Ho. Oh, that's awesome. Look at that. It's even got built IRL on it. I mean, it does look the way I designed it, so uh, just hope it works. Well, after I mounted the PCB and sold it on my connectors, I was very pleased to find out that it turned on. And I was also able to successfully flash it with my program. So it's looking promising. Just before I went and did my preliminary test, there was just one more finishing touch that I really wanted to do, and that was adding a leather grip. Although it actually took me a bit more work than I expected, but I eventually got a handle on it. And with that, I think it's done. Got my PCB, my leather grip, the LED indicators, and they can indicate either battery life or at the moment I've got it set for throttle. So as I reverse, the LEDs show reversing, there's your neutral and there's your forward. So let's see this in operation. So let's just do the first time spooling. I mean, it should go pretty well given that that's basically the exact thing that this is designed for. And, okay. Beautiful, gotta love that. So if I put the motor in reverse, I can just unspool it by hand. Okay, I consider that tensioned. All right, let's do this. Oh, yep. It works. Well, it seems to be working splendidly, so you gotta be happy with that. Now, I can't wait to test it out properly, and that's what'll the next video be. What'll the next video be? Sp no, no, not Spider-Man. No, I know what you're thinking, no. The next video will be testing this out. Spider-Man is after the test, but come on, this is so cool. The test is going to be great, so come back next month for that. Otherwise, cheers everyone, all the best, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Oh, I should totally zip out of frame. All the best, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>